Hey guys, I'm Destiny. This is Monday Mail number 7. I want to start off this video by giving a big shout out to the people that bought my last Twitch shirt. I really appreciate it. I think I sold uh, somewhere over 200 of them on track for the same numbers I normally sell them for. Um, I'm also re-listing my older Twitch shirt, the famous Lair Ruse one, the first one I did. I know that a lot of people have been requesting that. The price is a little bit high on it. I don't know if I can tweak that since I'm re-listing it or not. Um, I might look into it or I might not because I like making all that extra money. We'll see. Um, I'm going to hop right into the uh, three questions. The link for that shirt is going to be found in the info below, as well as a link to the next set of questions and, you know, all that jazz. I'm going to hop into these questions now. Um, first question comes from Levy Poop. Poop? I don't know how to pronounce his name. How are you going to deal with Nathan when the kids he hangs out, uh, when the kids he hangs around with suddenly start talking about Christmas and Easter? What if Nathan is absolutely savage and bursts their bubble? Are you ready to deal with the parents and teachers? Um, for the first part of that question, I think that, um... Um, I don't really know. I, I've kind of thought about it. I'm not really worried about deal dealing with parents and teachers. I don't know if parents and teachers, or, well, more specifically, I don't know if teachers really encourage, like, the whole Santa Claus thing. I'm not sure. I guess it probably varies from teacher to teacher. Um, when I talk to Nathan about these kinds of things, whether it's Jesus or Christmas or whatever, I usually try to encourage him that, um, or to be open-minded. Not open-minded, but to be um, tolerant and respectful of other people's beliefs. So I, I don't think that Nathan is going to be in a position where he's preaching to other children, you know, that God is dead and Santa Claus is a fantasy made up by the capitalist masterminds or whatever. Um, it's probably just going to be more that I'll introduce it to him as a fairy tale, and then I'll tell him maybe some people believe it's real because it's fun or whatever. I'm not, I don't know. I'll deal with that when I, when I come to it, I guess. But it's not something that I'm really worried about. I don't think this is going to be like a life-defining moment, you know, where Nathan loses a leg because he tells a fellow second grader that Santa Claus is actually fictitious. It's, it's not something that I'm really worried about. Um, in terms of dealing with teachers, the school is pretty nice. All the teachers seem really reasonable. And dealing with parents, getting into fights with parents will probably be the most fun for me because I think parents are some of the dumbest people on the planet. And the ability to argue with parents that are being stupid or treating their children like little princesses or whatever, or princes... I don't know. I would welcome the opportunity. <laughs> I think I think it would be an entertaining uh, PTA parent teacher assembly. I don't know, um, but re realistically, I, I don't I don't foresee much conflict coming out of that. Although I guess I mean it's possible it will in the future. Moving on to the second question uh, from Skymander, um, I'm probably not really gonna answer this one just because um, I don't I don't really have an answer. But it was high destiny. Could you tell us about? Um, could you tell us a story about your favorite Eve battle or moment? I know you have no plans to play again, but is there anything you missed from it? Uh, there wasn't ever really like a particular awesome Eve moment for me. Um, playing it and hanging out with everybody was a lot of fun. Riding a lot of the large fleets was a lot of fun. Um, when we were capturing moons and doing our own thing for a long time, that was a lot of fun. But it was more kind of like the entire collective experience. There wasn't one giant like, oh fuck, that was so awesome moment. Um, I guess maybe when we were mining one time and that Titan accidentally jumped into our system, that was pretty awesome, except the alliance that we were a part of, Brave, um, completely fucked that whole thing up, so we didn't actually get to kill it, unfortunately, but, um, yeah, I don't know, there wasn't, like, a specific, there wasn't, like, a specific moment for when I felt like, oh, God, this is the real EVE experience or whatever. The player base for that game was full of a bunch of pussies, dude. The, um, the, the problems that I always had with EVE going through EVE was that the player base is very, 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 very risk averse. Like you joined corporations and these people would kick you out if you lost ships while you were in their court because they didn't want their kill mails to look bad. Um, people play that game. It sounds really cool when you think about it, but the, the way that it actually plays out is nobody takes a fight unless they know they can win or they have backup to call in and everything is just usually like a massive fuck fest where one giant force comes in and shits on someone else and then everybody calls that fun. And a lot of the content was artificial and contrived, but I know that there are going to be people posting now saying that the updates and everything changed that and that the Goon Swarm is gone and all that shit. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but ugh, I'm, I have a really bad memory of how giant of a fucking collective vagina the entire player base was, so I'm not sure if that's something that... Um, or, or regar regardless, even if they did change, I don't think I could play that again. Just because streaming that game is so hard, um, it makes the... Uh, user, the, or the viewer experience pretty bad when you're sitting, because you can't really stream any of the fights live, you got to put a massive delay on it, and then um, the fights themselves are hard to follow, it's literally just like millions of little boxes floating all over the screen, so it's hard to understand anything of what's going on. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know, I probably will never stream Eve again, or go back to Eve just because I can't really stream it, but yeah. Yeah, so I guess um, to summarize that up, there was, I, I had fun kind of playing the Eve 
Yeah, I had fun. But hanging out with everybody and talking with everybody was a lot of fun. Um, babysitting everybody and doing the spy shit and figuring out who was a traitor and all of that and the battles sometimes. I don't know. It was all just kind of like, it was an experience. Let me put it that way. It was an experience, okay? It's kind of like you get kidnapped in a foreign country and but the guys don't actually rape you or torture you, but they keep you in really uncomfortable rooms. Um, but while you're in those uncomfortable rooms, maybe you get to like look out a window and see some really cool sights. And it doesn't really make up for the fact that you've been kidnapped, but then you get rescued at the end. Um, but nobody really cares you got rescued. So like, what, like, how do you tell that story at the end? Like, was it really awesome and exciting? Well, not really. You were never in really danger, or you were never in really in any danger. Um, you got to see some cool things, but you were also locked up. And it's just like, like that. That's kind of like how does that story seem like really clusterful? Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, that's exactly. If that's how you're feeling, that's how I felt at the end of my Eve experience. It's just kind of like a bunch of, eh. yeah. Let's go with that. Um, Third question comes from Oh Brother Seventeen. Whatever happened unfiltered after Richard Lewis left? You and Chan Man V talked about um, having a new host and changing the format of the show. Do you plan on getting into other podcasts in the future or even starting your own? This could be whether it is video game related or not. Um, whoa. Some people in my other videos, I always do this thing where I say, I could talk about this for a long time, and then I don't actually talk about it because I don't want to drone on and on and on. We'll, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit. So in specifically let's talk about unfiltered so unfiltered a long time ago chan man approached me or i maybe approached him and he said um hey do you want to do a show having to do with starcraft and stuff doing you know in starcraft and chan man was a no name at the time and i was the i was a pretty big guy streamer because starcraft was still the number one thing and i think i was the number one streamer so i was a pretty big guy back then and i wanted to do it because chan man was a cool dude and i think he was working he'd worked on a couple other things in the past and i saw that he'd put a ton of time and and passion and shit into his youtube channel and shit and he had like no subs or anything um now, this isn't to say that Chan Man was a charity case. He did all the work on Unfiltered and I don't mean to give that impression. But he was a cool dude and I wanted to help him out and I thought it'd be cool to go on a show and give my opinion and all that. So Unfiltered kind of came about that way. After a while, Richard Lewis hopped on because me and him seemed to be um, natural pairs for one another for all of our individual faults and even when we scuffle with each other. I think we still kind of like each other at the end or at least I still like him. I don't think he hates me. Um, no, I, I think we think we're cool. And... Um, He's very argumentative, very um, loud and boisterous with his opinion. So he was a good counterbalance to me, assuming we disagreed on something. So that that was kind of the summary of Unfiltered. After Richard Lewis left, um, the direction that Unfiltered would have to take would change dramatically without somebody else like him to kind of anchor down my opinion. Basically, it would just be um, like Stephen's opinions. That would be every show. Like you would sit there and I would just kind of and Chan would be like, well, what about? And I'd be like, and then that would be the entire show. Um, you know, relying on whether or not we can get a really good guest to stand in as like a counterweight, somebody like Raynad or um, somebody like Red Eye. But, with, but you know, sans of those guests, it's going to be a pretty boring show. Um, it'll just be like listening to my stream. So I wasn't really willing to put in a ton of effort and work getting that kind of stuff rolling. Chan Man has his other projects rolling. And as a result of the culmination of all of those things, Unfiltered just kind of died once, Unfilter, uh, once uh, Richard Lewis left. Um, for me personally, in terms of how I feel doing podcast related stuff, I personally have a lot of interests that lie outside of gaming, which you know if you watch my stream, right? Uh, at this particular point in time, I have a really big interest in politics in the United States. I think it's really fascinating, everything that's going on in the United States. And then, you know, by extension of that, there's been a lot of different things in economics that I've been interested in. Um, science and technology, computer related stuff, hardware is something that I'm really interested in, and then music is something that I'm really interested in. These are all topics that if I had the ability to do a podcast and pull in guests that were knowledgeable on these topics, I would go for a million times over gaming. Now, gaming is entertaining to me, and I enjoy playing games, and it might be cool to talk about some... Um, how do I say, like theories of gaming, maybe like a big discussion on whether RTS is a viable genre going forward, or what is the responsibility of a developer going forward, you know, like those kinds of topics are really interesting to me. Gaming drama is, uh, I don't know, I don't really want to just talk about a game every week. I feel like I, I feel like there are so many other things that I would like jump the chance to be involved in. And just talking about, you know, like the patch notes of Hearthstone and how the new purity card or whatever for the priest is the worst card ever or how the new Legacy of the Void Changers are, you know, so good for StarCraft or the Brood War HD remake or, you know, why is Riot fucking up League and then blah, blah, blah. Like, these aren't topics that every week they roll around like I want to talk to them. Like, 
or I, I want to talk about them, right? Can, like, I guess if you could imagine that, like it got to that point with Unfiltered where it's like, ah, all right, what do we think of Dream Hack going on today? Like, uh, you know, like these are like, there are so many other things. Whereas like, if I had the opportunity to do a podcast and obviously I'm dropping huge names here, but somebody like uh, the Nate Silver dude um, is the guy from 538. Ooh, am I allowed to Google things while I'm doing a YouTube video? Yeah, the Nate Silver guy um, from 538. Like being able to talk to political people like that, that are in the know, that are doing a lot of analysis now of politics. Um, being able to talk to um, people loosely related via philosophy, like the Sam Harris dude, um, or even like the Young Turks. As much as I know you guys hate some of those people, like being able to be involved in conversations with people like that, like that's an exciting thing that I would look forward to all week long. Like I'd be like, oh fuck, like on Monday I've got a podcast. Or musically related, you know, I've got the Sithu A guy um, who does the guitar memes, or the guy that did the um, the Dust soundtrack, the Hyperdeck Studios dude. Like those are podcasts where, like, on, like if they were on Friday, like on Sunday, I'd be like, oh fuck, like five days, and I get to fucking be on this podcast. It's gonna be fucking awesome. I get to ask all these awesome questions and find out, you know, like what did, why do you write music the way you do? Like, how did you think up this song? Where do you even start first? Like, what inspired you to do this? Or for like the political related things, like why do you think people are thinking these things right now? Do you think there's any relationship between what's going on with Trump? here and what's going on with brexit here um do, how much do you think immigration plays into it do you think people are really racist do you think like all of these questions these are things that like are fascinating to me and i love to talk about them and i love to argue about them and i love for people to tell me i'm wrong and i love to learn new things and all of these topics are awesome um and then but then again like if i know that monday we're doing like you know like picks for gsl or talking about how much of a success or failure dream hacker you know the shanghai major like Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, right? They're just not as exciting for me. So if I did do a podcast or something in the future, I feel like it would be related to one of those other topics I mentioned and it wouldn't necessarily be like a like a gaming, you know, like this is going to be a gaming kind of thing. Um that was where um this is kind of related and I know that there's probably some people thinking it. Um at one point in time me and Richard Lewis almost made a podcast together, but the problem is we were kind of branching off into different directions of what we wanted to do. Where Richard Lewis is obviously very much focused on their reporting and opinion stuff related to esports and I didn't really want to start a project and tie my name into something so hardcore related to gaming. Um if I started a podcast, I wanted it to be it would literally be called something like like the names I was wondering, like the Von L. Lewis show or something, where we would talk about a wide range of topics, and it wouldn't similar to like the like the Joe Rogan experience would be like the like the best example that I could think of that would be related to that, and then and then yeah, Richard Lewis wanted to kind of stick to the gaming topic, so that's why nothing really ever kind of materialized, or not kind of nothing ever materialized from that because we couldn't really agree on where we wanted that podcast to lie, so. Um, I might in the future, um, I want to do a podcast kind of, I just, I'm not sure what it would be at and I don't have the time right now because I'm dumping my time into so many other things and by so many other things. Nathan's starting school now, so that's get part of my schedule will, will be alleviated a little bit more and I'm also dropping rest soon, um, after next week. So I won't have to worry about that impacting my sleep schedule either. I don't know. Maybe how about after I get my next composition challenge posted? You know what? I'll try to get that posted this week. Um, maybe once I have those rolling again, maybe I'll look into doing the podcast memes, but that's all I got for this week. If you check the uh, description below, I'll have a link posted to the questions for Monday Mail number eight. I've changed the uh, submission so that they're in contest mode. So now it's not just the first one that's submitted is at the top. Now you'll have to actually scroll through and read what you want to see first. So hopefully we get more variety in questions and not just the people who post first, you know, rising to the top every time. Thanks a lot for joining. Um, thanks a lot again to all the guys about my shirt last time. I really do appreciate it, even if I don't say it much. Um, I do have something in mind over the next probably month that I want to do on stream just kind of as a thank you to the people that continue to support me. And yeah, that's all I got for now. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you later.